Hi, welcome to ACE Online. Myself Krishna Reddy, Faculty of Electrical Engineering Branch. I am going to deal a uh, power system subject. Here, in this session, we will discuss about uh, some brief points regarding the circuit breaker. If you physically observe a circuit breaker, it consists of what? So, there will be a circuit breaker tank, we can say. And in this circuit breaker tank, we have two contacts. One is fixed contact and the other one is moving contact. So one is fixed contact and the other one is moving contact. Okay. So these two contacts can be either kept closed or separated in the medium of insulation. So if you observe the circuit breaker, it consists of two contacts. One is fixed contact and the other one is moving contact. And these two contacts can be either kept closed or separated in the medium of insulation. So what is the requirement of insulation in the circuit breaker? Why the insulation is required? So here, if you observe the circuit breaker, these two contacts can be either separated or kept closed in the medium of insulation. Now the question goes, why, why the insulation is required? What is the requirement of insulation? What is the requirement of insulation? So why the insulation is required in case of circuit breaker? So if you observe in case of circuit breaker, normally this fixed contact and moving contact will be kept closed. But when they are separated, there will be formation of arc. So in order to quench the arc, insulation is required. Okay. So when contacts are separated, when contacts are separated, there will be formation of arc. Formation of arc. In order to quench the arc, we need insulation, okay? In order to quench arc, we need insulation. So insulation is required in order to quench the arc. So when the contacts are separated, there will be formation of arc. In order to quench the arc, we need what? Insulation. So the insulation uh, which is used in case of circuit breaker should have what properties? That insulation should have high dielectric strength. So the properties of insulation, so insulation properties. properties of insulation. So insulation which is used in case of circuit breaker should have what properties? It should have high dielectric strength. Okay. High dielectric, high dielectric strength. The dielectric strength should be very high so that the spacing required for contact separation will be less. And it should have heat dissipation capability. Heat dissipation capability. So, so whenever the contacts are separated, there will be formation of arc. So that arc will generate the heat. So it should have, insulation should have the heat dissipation capability. And uh, it should free be it should be free from impurities and it should be it should not catch fire we can say it should not catch fire or it should be it should be non-flammable we can say apart from this it should have 
arc quenching property this is the basic property required arc quenching property so insulation used in case of circuit breaker should have what property arc quenching property that is a basic requirement so what are the insulations that are used in case of circuit breaker based on that uh, what are the different types of circuit breakers that we have let us observe okay so classification of circuit breakers based on the arc quenching medium so we have air we can use air as an insulation so based on that we have two one is air break switch and the other one is air blast circuit breaker in these two cases air will be acting as uh, uh, insulation medium oil circuit breaker we have and sf6 gas is used in case of sf6 circuit breaker vacuum is used in case of vacuum circuit breaker okay these are the different types of circuit breakers that we have uh, based on the insulation that we are using okay air oil vacuum and sf6 gas so let us go through the first one that is air brake switch this is also known as air brake circuit breaker air brake circuit breaker circuit breaker now if you observe this ab switch or air brake switch ab switch or air brake switch in this atmospheric air at normal temperature and pressure is used for arc quenching medium atmospheric air will be used okay no external pressure will be applied atmospheric air available at room temperature is used for what arc quenching medium so what is the dielectric strength of air generally you may get a question what is the dielectric strength of air 30 kilo volt per centimeter it is peak magnitude okay so as there is no external pressure is being or no external pressure is being applied so here the arc quenching process will be poor because room temperature uh, air is being used for quenching of arc so here the arc interruption process is poor so in case of air brake switch or air brake circuit breaker the arc interruption process will be poor that's why we cannot recommend this breaker to very high voltage level so it is used uh, 400 volts to 1000 volts range 1000 volts range okay that is the limitation of air brake switch here uh, uh, the air at normal temperature and pressure at room temperature and pressure is used for arc quenching purpose now let us go for the second one air blast circuit breaker the name itself says observe here air blast circuit breaker so in air blast circuit breaker high pressure air high pressure air is used as arc quenching medium here pressurized air is used okay in case of air brake uh, switch or air brake circuit breaker room temperature air is used for arc quenching in case of air blast circuit breaker pressurized air is used okay so uh, once the high pressure air is used for quenching of arc it will have good cooling properties okay so the high pressurized air good cooling properties so that uh, arc can be quenched quickly and uh, this high pressure air is maintained up to condensation point so that uh, gaseous molecules will be converted into what liquid medium okay so air pressure uh, at what pressure uh, it is maintained sir around 20 to 30 kilogram per centimeter square this can be the question what is the pressure that is being maintained 20 to 30 kg per centimeter square up to what operating voltages levels we can use air blast circuit breaker 12 kV to 525 kV. So here, based on the direction of blast of air, on which direction you are blasting the air, we have axial blast, cross blast and radial blast circuit breakers. We have three types, axial blast, cross blast and radial blast circuit breakers. If you observe the axial blast circuit breakers, high pressure air will be exerted on axial direction. So here, suppose whenever the fixed contact and moving contact are separated there will be formation of arc so here air will be exerted in an axial direction to that of air sorry that of arc so axial direction okay so in case of uh, a axial blast high pressure air will be exerted on the arc axially now coming to the cross blast circuit breaker high pressure air will be exerted on the arc perpendicularly so if you observe cross blast circuit breaker so fixed contact 
and moving contact. There will be formation of what? Arc. So here, high pressure air will be blasted in perpendicular direction. Okay. High pressure air will be blasted in. High pressure air will be exerted on the arc in a perpendicular direction. That is in case of what? Uh, cross blast circuit breaker. Okay. Coming to the radial blast, in radial blast circuit breaker, high pressure air will be exerted on the arc perpendicularly. Okay. It will exert on the arc perpendicularly and leave the chamber axially. Okay. Air will be leaving the chamber axially. So if you observe cross blast circuit breaker, we have seen here radial blast. So fixed, co fixed contact and moving contact, there will be formation of arc here. So in case of uh, radial blast, so here air will be blasted in a perpendicular direction. Air will be blasted in a perpendicular direction across the arc and it will leave axially. So these are the three types, axial blast, cross blast and radial blast. That is based on what? Based on blast direction, based on the blast direction. Now coming to the next one, that is oil circuit breakers, okay. So the next insulating medium is what? Oil circuit breakers. Insulating oil or transformer oil is used as an arc quenching medium. Here the contacts are separated in the medium of what? Arc. So Whenever the contacts are separated in the medium of oil, so here the arc strikes between the contacts, okay. So what happens whenever the arc formation takes place, so if you observe, so suppose if you take, this is a chamber, this is a fixed contact and this is a moving contact, here this is being filled. Now, yeah, arc formation takes place in the medium of oil. Now what happens due to the heat that is being generated by the arc, there will be a gas bubble that has been developed, observe here. So the contacts are separated, the arc struck between the contacts, so heat evaporates the oil. So heat of this arc will evaporate the oil and decomposed into what majority of the gas will be hydrogen gas at high pressure, okay. So it will develop the hydrogen gas. This is what gas bubble we can say. Gas bubble is developed. So gas bubble will be developed uh, in which majority consists of hydrogen gas. So the volume of gas produced will be 1000 times that of oil decomposed. Volume of gas produced will be how much? 1000 times that of oil decomposed. So here the arc energy decomposed into 70% of hydrogen gas it has, 5% methane, 22% acetylene, 3% ethylene. Okay. Majority it is consisting of what hydrogen gas, 70% hydrogen gas, 5% methane, 22% acetylene and 3% ethylene. So here now if you observe arc in a gas bubble, it is uh, surrounded by what gas bubble here? Arc in a bubble of gas surrounded by what? Uh, oil, okay, it is surrounded by oil. So how the arc extinction process is going to take place in case of oil circuit breaker? If you observe, this hydrogen gas will cool the arc, okay? Hydrogen gas will cool the arc. And what does the hydrogen gas does? It will push the oil to remove that arcing products pushes the oil between the contacts to remove the arcing products, okay. So this is how the arc extinction will take place in case of what? Oil circuit breaker. So here based on the amount of oil that has been used in case of oil circuit breaker, bulk oil circuit breaker and minimum oil circuit breaker will be used. So now let us observe what is the difference between bulk oil circuit breaker and minimum oil circuit breaker that has been used. So arc quenching medium, so arc quenching bulk oil as well as uh, medium oil circuit breaker, oil is used as an arc quenching medium, okay. You may get a question. In bulk oil circuit breaker, what is arc quenching medium? Oil. Minimum oil also it is oil. 
And observe the second comparison. Insulation provision with respect to live parts, that is oil in case of oil circuit breaker, and solid insulation is used in case of minimum oil circuit breaker. Insulation provision with other live parts, it is done by water, solid insulation. Pulling of arc, in bulk oil it is oil circuit breaker. Gaseous coolant is used in case of what minimum oil circuit breaker. Now let us go for the next insulation medium, that is SF6 gas, SF6 circuit breaker. If you observe in case of SF6 circuit breaker, SF6 gas, that is sulfur hexafluoride gas, is used for arc quenching medium. So here SF6 gas is used as what? Arc quenching medium. What is the advantage by going through this SF6 gas? SF6 gas has high dielectric strength, that is two to three times that of air, the dielectric strength of SF6 gas is more. What is the dielectric strength? Uh, it is around 80 kilo volt per centimeter. What is the advantage? It is a good coolant and it is having electronegative property. This is a major question, majority times you will get SF6 gas is having what property? It is an electronegative gas, electronegative gas. Now, so here, at current 0 point, what is going to do? We are going to create a turbulence force will be created inside the circuit breaker chamber. So heat dissipation will come, come to more because uh, we are going to insert the SF6 gas.
vacuum will be created. So here the dielectric strength of vacuum is around 10 power 7 volt per centimeter, very high dielectric strength. So the spacing between the contact separation will be very less. Now if you observe, there are no gaseous molecules that are present in the medium of what vacuum. So how the arc wheel formation will take place? So whenever the contacts are separated, there will be formation of what uh, metal vapor due to that arc formation will take place. Whenever the contacts get separated, metal vapor will form. So that is also known as plasma. So at the current zero point, there will be only electromagnetic force becomes zero. Only gravitational force will exist and the arc will touch the chamber and the arc will extinguish. So first current zero point only, the arc will be quenched. We can say that at first, uh, sorry, first thing stability can be obtained by using this vacuum circuit breakers. So for what, up to what old days we can use vacuum circuit breakers that can be up to 66 kV. Now if you observe, the vacuum circuit breakers are used in applications up to what old days level. So this type of questions can be asked, that is 66 kV. Beyond 66 kV creation of vacuum is difficult, that's why it is used up to what, 66 kV. Now observe this question. Circuit breaker preferred in recent times, in the old days 132 kV to 765 kV. So that is nothing but SF6 circuit breaker. We prefer to use what? SF6 circuit breaker. Now let us observe. SF6 gas is a neutral gas, non-attaching gas, quickly ionizing gas, electronegative gas. It is an electronegative gas. Now let us observe this question. The dielectric strength of SF6 gas is approximately same as that of air, 2 to 3 times that of air, more than air, less than air, 10 to 20 times more than air, 2 to 3 times that of air. It is 2 to 3 times that of air. So that's all I want to discuss from a circuit breaker's point of view. I have given some points regarding the circuit breaker. So in our lecture, we will discuss a lot more. So I thank, thank you all for giving me this opportunity. I wish you all the best. Subject wise test and full length test. Then for mains preparation, I solved question banks which were given to me as a part of mains postal program from ACE Online. And then last but not the least, for interview preparation, I followed the interview guidance material which was given to me as a part of ACE Online's interview guidance program. I am Vinit Kumar. I have secured All India Rank 1 in Mechanical Engineering in ESC 2021. I have been associated with ACE Engineering. I have taken various programs like LIFE's main classes, Postal study course, test series, and interview guidance program. So, would like to thank all the faculties of ACE. It has helped me in building my concepts and having my fundamentals cleared. I would also like to highlight that in test series, uh, I have given various mock tests which have helped me in the time of real exam and in interview guidance program, building confidence in the in front of interview panel.